Right now, let's toss it to WEEI, some of the players right now chatting about the Jimmy Fund and what it means to them. And it's just an honor to be able to just hang out with them. And how about you, Andrew? Yeah, that's when I was uh, first exposed to it was uh, this spring training. Um, you know, go down there, you know, go out there for all it takes is 15 to 20 minutes, but um, you know, to go out there and see the reactions of, of the kids, and uh, it's pretty special. Are you amazed at, at your age and, you know, new to all of this, that you go over to that clinic and there are kids that just light up. It makes their day. Kids that are going through a real tough time. Are you aware of how important that is for those kids? Uh, I'm starting to learn that, yeah. I mean, um, you know, when I was growing up, um, I would watch, you know, some of the Reds play, and um, I got to meet uh, Griffey uh, when he was there, and um, just kind of my reaction, I think, is I think what I'd imagine what their reaction would be. So, uh, you know, it goes a long way, and um, you know, when we can take time out of our day to you know go over and um, you know hopefully impact some somebody, and um, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, what is it? Is it is it Holt logging the most hours over there at the hospital? Is Prop, it, Prop, we hear he's over there a lot. He's yeah. the captain. Yeah. Oh, so he's yeah. the captain, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And recruits yeah. you guys yeah. to get over there. No, he right. I, don't, I don't think he recruits. He, us. he doesn't recruit. We we go. Yeah. And, and just kind of go as as we can. I mean, um, anytime we can affect somebody's somebody's life, I feel like uh, we all take the opportunity to do it. Put so some so per perspective, I'm sure, yeah. as far as. Sure oh, I got a little elbow here. I got a little knee here. I don't feel like getting up to work and to see what these kids are going through. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. I mean, you just know that they're going through, you know, life, life, life changing uh, illnesses, and, and we go out and and you know get this job, and, and you know it kind of helps us to to understand that we're blessed, you know, and we have to uh, understand it and keep that in perspective and know that you know no matter if we go 0 for 4 or 0 for 10, you know, there, there's always. Uh, people that are that are that have it have it tougher you know i was laughing last night because somebody came up to me and said you know the, the young red Sox, these guys are on fire right now and they said devers and benintendi <laughs> and i say well it's like mookie jackie and bogey that they're all old now it's like you yeah, guys season like, are. You know, these guys are young now you guys are just old apparently yeah, right yeah, yeah. I, I, it, 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 we're weathered yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the young bees the baby bees yeah. i think it was and the young bees and the baby bees all right it is what it is you know we have we have to get old at some point mookie you were talking about this, I think, with an interview with Rob Bradford last week about life without David Ortiz. You guys seem to be clicking right now. Was this difficult since he was such a leader in that clubhouse? Obviously, he was important to in the lineup. You can see that. But how difficult has this really been for you guys? And do you believe that you've got now the internal leadership to move on without David Ortiz? I think so for sure. Um, you know, we have a, a good group of, of vets um, along with uh, with young guys that kind of mesh mesh together really well, and and I think uh, we just had to learn our our identity. And and once we once we did, I think, or, and we're still kind of learning, but but once we once we get it, we'll be fine. I think we're we have a, a better understanding, um, better idea of of what we who we are, and I think we're just showing it. Speaking of guys that aren't here on the team anymore, do you guys? Any, any of you guys read the Players Tribune and see uh, the article that uh, your old friend Pablo Sandoval put out there the other day? I didn't read it. I saw. Do you hear about it? Do, what we're basically just paraphrasing. Just felt like uh, it was tougher here. Uh, he never felt uh, like he belonged. What was what was your? But he experience? never he never blamed the team, the players, or anything. He just no. said he just didn't feel like he ever really fit. Yeah. And what what was your experience, Jack? I'll start with you. What was your experience with Pablo? Was he just? No, 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 definitely. That's for. I mean, I feel like he's he was himself since since day one. Um, and I I really enjoy Pablo. He was a special person. Um, he was a a great energy, and he was someone that you can come talk to. Um, he, he wasn't very introverted at all, and you know I think I think we as a team enjoy Pablo as well. Um, you know he was fun. So what do you think it was that how he felt, Mookie? Maybe that he didn't feel like he fit in what do you think it was about um i think it was just people from the outside as far as fans and and, and media that kind of uh, that kind of made him feel not at too home. hard on yeah him. and and i mean it definitely didn't come from the clubhouse because i mean he we had fun in the clubhouse with, with pablo so um i think it, it was more of that and and you know he didn't have time a, ho a whole lot of time nobody gave him a chance to to be himself and, and go out and play and um i think uh, you know from from day one he was 
scrutinized and whatnot instead of embraced, and I think that's that's what made it tough for him. You know, Andrew, I wanted to ask you because you seemed like you had like I don't know what it was three days maybe off, kind of like a little breather. And I'm curious, you, since you come back, you've been hot. I mean, you're driving everything around the ballpark. Was it more of just kind of needing that second breath, or does it get to the point where maybe you're kind of overthinking things and maybe how the pitchers were attacking you need to simplify again? Yeah, it was uh, two days in a rain, in a rain out. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just those two days, three days, were was a time to kind of just take a step back, relax, and, um, you know, put in some work with Chile and um, Ruben in the outfield. But, um, yeah, I mean, just trying to keep things simple and um, more of a mental break. Um, I was, you know, frustrated for a while and obviously not playing, you know, my best baseball. So um, I think those, those two days really helped. This 2017 Red Sox team is doing something I've never seen a Red Sox team do over the years, and I've seen a lot of them, and that's run constantly. You guys are constantly manufacturing runs. Now, you had a power outage for a good portion of the season. Hopefully that's over. It's been better in the last couple of weeks. But what is the strategy in running? Because you're also getting thrown out an awful lot at third and at home, and those are runs that are going off the board. Is it we're willing to take the risk because there's enough opportunities that in the end it's going to be a plus for us? What is it? Like they always preach, they always say there's a means to the end. So, um, you know, I feel like, you know, being aggressive um, obviously, you know, forces teams to try to make plays. Um, in that same instance, um, we're also forcing teams to make mistakes because they know how aggressive we are and how we run the bases. And, you know, we're hoping it works out for the best of us. As long as we keep getting those opportunities, we feel like, um, we're going to eventually come through. You know, all three of you guys are just really talented when it comes to, you know, just playing the ball in the air, you know, making those unbelievable catches, especially you, Jackie, in center field. Is there, is there, I mean, I'm trying to, I mean, I know you're not probably thinking, oh, I don't want to run to the wall. I don't want to run to the wall. But there needs to be some, you know, you obviously know where things are. Like when, when the ball is, is, is up there, is it, what are you looking at? Are you just focused on the ball itself? And just kind of just kind of know where the wall is it's because you've done it so many times. Yeah, I think it's just a little. It's an innate feeling. It's um, you know instincts. You you've done it for so long. Um, repetitions. So it's just one of those things where you, you're used to it, and you don't really pay attention to you know how far I am from the wall. You, you have you know guys to your left and your right communicating with you. So. It's one of those things where you just try to, you know, stay comfortable and, you know, be a playmaker. You know, Mook, you just recently got moved to kind of the middle of the order, and it's been second, third, fourth at times. And I'm just curious, from last year, you know, given the damage that you did against opposing pitchers, are you seeing something different? Are you seeing them attacking you differently? Maybe no David Ortiz and being a little more careful with you. Um, I, you know, I, I don't really know. I, I've still, I've still been getting good pitches to hit. I just haven't hit them, and so, um, you know, I'm just. Sticking with uh, the process, you know, we still have time, um, but you know that's we're, we're still winning, so I, I can't really be mad at you know anything that's going on. Um, you know, I just try and help the team in any way. Maybe it's you know defense or, or going first or third and, and scoring a run. So um, you know, I, I haven't uh, you know obviously I'm a little a little frustrated, but as long as we keep winning, you know, you know, I keep well, manufacturing. Well, see, that's just what you kind of look at too, right? Like this guy's hot. You know, Devers gets hot. You know, Nunez comes over and gets hot. And they're going to cool down, and then you guys get hot, right, with Hanley and things like that. It kind of meshes well together. I think you kind of saw that last year at times, right? Guys get hot, guys get cold. That's what happens. It's right. a team. Yeah. That's what it's all about, um, being able to pick each other up. Um, you know, you don't get the job done. We, we feel like the next person will, and we have faith in each and every single one of us. You mentioned Pablo earlier with the fans and the media, and I get it. We're, we, we scrutinize, and it's an emotional game here playing in Boston. Is it more difficult, do you think, playing in a town like this? I've never been anywhere else. So exactly. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, we, we don't know. We don't know anything different. Do you ever talk with other players and other teams and exchange stories back and forth about Boston versus where they play? Tampa Bay, let's say? Uh, Not a whole lot. I mean, you know, obviously, we, I think we just kind of know we have more media just due to being in Boston. But, um, you know, we don't we don't really talk about it a whole lot. Um, I know some guys that, you know, they come over and say, man, there's a, there's a lot of guys standing around, you know, a lot of people that travel with us and whatnot. But 
Um, you know, we, we don't uh, you know, exchange stories or anything. You know, there's we have this debate on the show a lot about you know how the sport, how baseball, Major League Baseball, is marketed, how they market their stars, and three of them right here in our, in our own city, especially when you compare it to basketball or football. The faces are recognizable. The names are recognizable. Maybe not as much uh, in baseball. Is do you guys are you guys aware of that? Is it something that's talked about at all? I think we're aware of it, but um, you know, it's one of those things where it's always been that way. Uh, basketball, they have a limited amount of players. Um, they're they are very easy to market. Um, they're tall. Um, they're they're um, their faces are always shown. Um, we usually have helmets and hats on. I mean, there's multiple times where we'll go out. And sometimes people might not recognize you. Um, oh, you look so much different without a hat on. So it's, you know, or football players, they're always wearing helmets. Um, obviously, you know the, the big names and um, the, the, you know, the big faces. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes I bet you wouldn't even be able to pick out a cornerback. Uh, just because he's always has his helmet on. You know, another big topic too is pace of play and time of games. Man, you guys have been on the field, I think, long more than anyone in baseball, right? With the extra inning games you've played before, the length of them at times. Do you guys feel that way as well? Like, do you feel that it needs to be sped up? I personally blame the pitchers. I think it's all their fault. Pace of play, get the ball and throw it. I'll be ready. But do you guys actually discuss it? Because it talked an awful lot about outside of a locker room. Like this game is too long. We got to speed it up. Yeah, I don't think we really think about the the speed of the game. Um, you know, I think I, we, I think we make up the time, and it's not even necessarily in between innings. It's because you know we extend innings with two out hits, and, you know, longer at bats and all those type of things. And I think that's where the games just start getting long. I think when sales on extra the mound, innings are crutch, be to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've uh, played a lot of extra inning games, so I think that's what's driven our um, gameplay um, time, time's up. Do you like that idea of the 10th inning going and putting a guy in scoring position oh. at International, second base? Like that? Yeah. No. No? World no. Baseball like Classic. That? No? No. Shorter Why? evening shorter evening of work. Nah, I don't like that. They don't get paid by the hour. That's right. They don't get paid by the hour. That seems forced to me yeah. and more changes to the game. The, the game's already. What about strike zone? We hear that a lot too. You know, almost like put a little beeper next to the umpire and let the thing, let the computer call balls. <laughs> should be a, should be a I robot. like the human element. I don't know. Would you like to see computers call balls and strikes so they make Ro- sure they get it right? Ump. No, I don't think so. A robot I mean, ump? You wouldn't like to see a robot ump? Hey, because you no. can't yell at them. I mean, even if it goes by that strike zone, there's some curve balls that bounce that in the that catch the box. So if those start being called strikes, it's kind of like. And that can't happen. I remember that tonight, though. If there's a little backdoor slider you don't like, I'll be like, see? Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, we really appreciate you spending some time here and coming yeah, down thanks. here and helping the cause. And more importantly, we appreciate the fact that you go over and you visit with the kids. That's a great thing that you do. All right? Probably. Thanks Good a lot. Thanks, guys. Really Enjoy. appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mookie Betts, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Andrew Benintendi.